I'm John K. Chu. I'm a partner and a patent lawyer at Ogilvy Renault. Uh, my current practice focuses on patent prosecution, drafting opinions, and also uh, commercial licensing with respect to intellectual property. Unfortunately, it really is sort of a wait and see. There's separate issues, I think, in Myriad that are important to note. The first is their holding with respect to the patentability of isolated gene sequences themselves. That, again, is sort of a wait and see. They took a very non-chemical view of DNA and, and RNA and took a very informational approach where they sort of equated DNA with information and whether that was markedly different from how it exists in the body. We will really need to see what the Federal Circuit is going to say about that and almost everybody is in a wait and see mode. I think that the biotech industry as a whole was not particularly um, shaken by it. I mean if you look at uh, on the business side certainly biotech indi indices and um, even Myriad's own stock didn't really dip that much when the decision came out and it regained a lot of it sort of the next day. So it, it, I think that kind of shows sort of a confidence on, in the biotechnology industry. Not the isolated DNA sequences, but certainly on the diagnostic test and the diagnostic procedure. Um, that's where the Myriad decision uh, cited Bilski and looked at whether there was any change or sort of the change or transformation test and applied Bilski and said that the actual isolated DNA sequences were not patentable. Um, therefore, under Bilski, because all you're doing is taking something that isn't markedly different from nature and doing these kinds of um, comparing and determining steps which don't actually change the nature of, of, of the, uh, the isolated sequences in any way other than how it is in nature, they said that, that there's no change according to Bilski. I think drafting practices will change. It was certainly the vogue before to put in these sort of broad statements of comparing and analyzing in the industry and um, those of us that, that draft and prosecute patents, certainly people are looking to put in more concrete um, steps of comparing such as some ideas are you know to put in steps that someone would, ha would have to do with respect to DNA such as you know putting in some PCR steps mm -hmm. or something of that nature. So those are the types of changes that people are thinking about on a practical level when you're talking about drafting patents. All the jurisdictions vary quite a bit in how claims are interpreted and all the rest of it. I mean obviously US has always been a very important market so people keep that in mind when they're when they're seeking patent protection and how to draft their patents and how to seek protection. Um, Canada is fairly slow moving on that point. Um, in Canada um, it's fairly loose so you know we usually draft in such a way that that there's nothing p peculiar for Canada. Um, however, in some other jurisdictions, diagnostic methods are not patentable. Uh, and that's by legislation, not by application of traditional patentable subject matter. They just say, you know, for public policy reasons, diagnostic tests and, and uh, methods of diagnosis or methods of medical treatment are, are, are outside of the realm of, of patentability.